You're still watching Plus Politics. Now, the River State Security Council has imposed a curfew on the 23 local government areas of the state with effect from Thursday. Governor Yeston Wike, in a statewide broadcast, said the decision to impose the curfew on the entire state was taken after an exhaustive deliberation by the State Security Council at Government House, Port Harcourt. The governor emphasized that in taking these other drastic measures at the time, the state government's singular intention was to secure the state and guarantee the protection of lives and property. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Kofi Batel, who's a broadcast journalist, and Enor Ogbeviri, who is the head of news, Nigeria Info FM, Port Harcourt. Thank you, gentlemen and lady, for joining us. Hi, Miriam. Okay, great. So I'll start with you, Eno. Um, there have been reports of deadly attacks and gruesome murders of some security operatives um, in Port Harcourt. And one would really wonder why this is happening, because every time you hear of the case of insecurity in River State, it's either it's a communal clash or cult clashes. But this time, security operatives are being targeted. Um, walk us through what exactly happened that you know, caused the government of the state to take this measure. Okay, so um, on, over the weekend, there was an attack um, very close to the airport and on the way to Oberi. Um, then there was another one in another community off the road going to Bayelsa. So the governor said um, on Tuesday, there was a curfew from 8 p.m. to um, 6 a.m. at the border communities because they thought, or they have, what the government has said that they believe that the attackers came from outside the town. So for them, it's a means to prevent whoever it is, the attackers, from coming in again. Because those groups are like on the expressway, they're not in the communities, they're on the expressway. So perhaps that was why it was an easy target. Um, so that was the first thing. And then just two days later, we hear that um, the, the curfew has now you know, been imposed statewide. Perhaps they have information that um, maybe the attackers are already in the city and the best way is to ensure that there's no movement so that if anybody is moving, it means that they're looking for trouble. So I think that's why the governor has taken that action. Interesting. Um, I just wonder again uh, why security operatives would be targeted in River State for a state where, you know, security operatives have been really treated well in terms of the governor is seen to be somewhat pampering these security officials, even though he's sometimes not on the same page with them, but you see gunboats being purchased by the government, you see vehicles being purchased by the government to help security operatives do their job. I mean, I know that you do not know necessarily why this is happening, but why do you think that this type of level of insecurity is happening in River State? I mean, the elections have come and gone, so what could be, from the reports that you have gathered, the reason for this happening? So when the attacks in Imo State were reported, I just said it was just a matter of time, but too close. Um, I mean, it was too close to home. So I just thought it was a matter of time that was going to happen. But I did not think um, it was going to happen this way. I mean, I didn't know how it was going to happen, but it was just because there, there have been attacks in Abia State, there have been attacks in um, um, Anambra State, Eboy State, Enugu State, you know, so... I mean, I just thought it was going to get here. I just didn't know when. Um, but the thing about the attack in university that makes it a bit different is, unlike the others, they were attacked, they were killed. Yes, but here, we heard that they were beheaded. And when I heard for the first time, I said, but well, that's a trademark of cultist groups in River State. Because, I mean, you've been here. You know that when cultist groups attack each other, they take the head like a trophy mm. back to wherever it is that they come from. So I, I told someone, I said, um, it would be hard for me to just accept that it's iPod, but that's what, you know, they've said. Hmm. It would be hard for me to accept that because it's a trademark of the cultists in River State and how they operate. But no one has come to say anything different, you know. And for the government to say that they came from outside the state means that he's perhaps agreeing with um, what the critical government chairman did say, that it was iPod that carried out that attack. Um just to buttress what you've just mentioned, um, just two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, there were about seven bodies that were beheaded in Cross River State, just same style, um, beheaded and just dumped in public glare. And first and foremost, the government of the state denied that any such thing happened. Of course, they're trying to paint the state in a good light. But if the NSCDC boss in that state, Eremi, was the one who reported that. 
And just as you've said, it's a cult-like killing. But what would mm -hmm. cultists be doing with security operatives? That's the part that we cannot understand. Yes, IPOP okay, has... So so they took their guns and they took vehicles. That's what we heard. They took their guns and they took vehicles. But I, I mean, I, I said to ask, did they have to go the whole nine yards just to get weapons from, you know, the military or from customs officers? So that for me still, you know, you know, begs the question. Hmm. Well, Kofi Basel is joining us. Kofi, uh, I did see on your late night show when you were talking about this, you know, um, curfew. And, you know, you were also analyzing the insecurity or the recent killings. Um, Eno has given us her perspective as to what she suspects because of the manner in which these men were killed. Uh, but what exactly do you think is responsible for this? Like I said, the elections have come and gone. But River State is experiencing this type of insecurity. It's another level. Security operatives being um, attacked or being targeted. For it not to happen again, that's why the government is having this curfew. But what do you think this is? Um, uh, there's a number of factors, and Miriam, thank you for having me. There's, there's a number of factors uh, responsible for this. Um, you know, the governor himself said unknown gunmen, um, uh, uh, faceless, you know, gunmen, you know, took out this attack. Um, we can point to what happened in Emo State, where it's alleged that the um, IPOB and the Eastern Security Network uh, 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 took out attacks on, you know, security installations. Uh, government security agency, GSAs, we have the, the Imo State Police Headquarters, we have uh, the uh, Nigerian Correctional Center facility there in uh, um, Oweri. Imo State is neighboring to River State, and uh, the, the, the area which was attacked where you had some uh, government security agents killed near the Port Harcourt International Airport, there's a route uh, through which it passed to get to Imo State. Um, so that might give a clue, that might give a clue as to uh, where these attacks are, are, are coming from. However, um, if, if the police and uh, the security agencies have not said anything, uh, who are we to, to, to say something? But in, in the realm of speculation, you know, most of the uh, frictions between the police um, and uh, uh, groups has been recently, we have the IPOB. Now, we're well aware of what happened in, in, in Oyibo, uh, a local government near Port Hackett in River State, where, you know, several persons... Uh, attacked the police station. The police station was burned down. Uh, several policemen were killed and women were killed. And uh, till now, there's a curfew in place in, in Oibo, local government area, um, just neighboring to, to uh, the city of Port Harcourt. So that's one. Um, we have had in recent times also issues of kidnappers. We have a cult problem in River State where we have cult groups rampaging in different local government areas. In recent times, security access has been in the news. Um, in other times, we've had um, that Elele Emoha a stretch, you know, at a point it was very dangerous for anyone to travel from River State to Emo State because on a daily basis at Eno and Baby Testament, because we worked together on the morning crossfire um, on radio show on, uh, in Port Harcourt here, we're always having to report buses, bus loads of, of people traveling to Emo State or from Emo State to River State um, uh, being kidnapped. You know, so we have these, these groups, uh, we can call them cultists, who operate around that area as well. Um, River State has also had its fair share of um, uh, uh, um, militancy activity, you know, that has uh, um, um, has led to an upsurge in, in, in guns, in, in weapons, uh, and all that. So, so it's a bit murky. We have the Eastern Security Network, Network and IPOB, but there are other groups that could be uh, responsible for this. Okay. The governor called them faceless groups, and uh, I think we can we can we can stick with that for now. Well, yeah, I mean that's what. Everybody calls them, even the bandits, the faceless gunmen. I mean, that seems to be a comfortable word for everybody right now. But um, what what does this mean for River State? Because, I mean, for example, we've had, I also was there when we kept talking about the Elele axis and all of the things that had been happening. Um, is a dust to done cough you enough solution to the problem? I mean, yes, the government is saying that they're investigating but why do we wait for things to happen on this scale for us to take drastic actions when we could have dealt with the issue when it was just a teething problem? Yes, this is multifaceted. You know, it's, it's not one of the things that, you know, maybe you could say the, the government could have controlled. Um, it's something that has come to meet us and it's taken us, some would say unawares, but some would say, well, we have intelligence officers, we have security officers, we should know better. 
Um, a dog still don't care if you will it, will it, will it, will it solve the entire problem. It may or may not solve the entire situation, but it will go a long way um, to help. It will go a long way to help because most of these attacks that we've heard about in different parts of the country, uh, most of them are carried out in the, under the cover of dark. You know, is it the attacks in Imo State, um, uh, you know, attacking the police headquarters there? Is it the attack on the correctional center? And several other places we've had, you know, attacks in the night. So, um, you know, at night we can have people staying at home. Um, the police and security officer, of, officials can roam about. They can um, uh, patrol okay. and see who is going where. Okay. You know, but, but, but some people have said, you know, on my radio program throughout the week, some have said, they can come in any time of the day. And if we, we have uh, history to rely on, you remember during the lockdown, the COVID-19 lockdown in River State, there were several reports of uh, people paying money to enter River State. They paid, you know, um, when there was a, a, a blockade of uh, the boundary between River State and the neighboring states, people were coming in. How were they coming in? They were paying money to the police and security officials at the border. So. Uh, so, some people have pointed out to this fact and said if it continues uh, the same way it did during the lockdown, then of course, um, you know, anyone can come in. That's number one. Number two, of course, they can come in in the daytime, you know, but, but uh, a security, uh, some security analysts have said that the, the, the government security agencies need to embark on serious surveillance, serious oh. surveillance in the daytime. Yes, and not wait till the night, you know, to mount their surveillance. They should actually mount it in the daytime. Oh, we, we have to go, is, Kofi. I'm so sorry yes. we have to go. We're out of time. Thank you very much, Eno Wavere and Kofi Patel, a broadcast journalist from who work in River State, by the way. Uh, Eno is the head of news in Nigeria Info FM, Port Hackett, and Kofi Patel does the late night show. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen and lady, for being part of this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for staying with us. We'll go on a short break for now and hear what Nigerians have to say. They believe that it is the job of the youth in Nigeria facing insecurity uh, challenges. Well, we'll get to hear what they have to say. And when we come back, I'll give you my take. I want to believe that the only thing the youth can do now is 2023 is coming. They can collectively form a youth party that forming a youth party, easily they can champion their cause and actualize their mandate. Youth has things to offer for this country. Uh, the days of uh, Zeke, the day of Awola and Namadu Belo, they are in their twenties, they are in their thirties, and they govern us well. The youth, both um, Igbo, Yoluba, Aosa, they come together to now to work out the hand so this Nigeria can move forward. You see, this country, it's never a country that other elders should be ruling anymore. Let the youth come in, all right, and prove their own kind of ability, maybe to build up the country. Because we rely on those that are big and they're strong. They still keep us back, back, back. They are cheating us. Actually, the youth have to be given a chance to work with the security agencies before they can, you know, they have to be given a chance, so they have to be given a voice as in the chance to be heard before they can be, be able to work with the government or the security agencies. So they can't just collaborate or work with the, the, the security agencies when they have not been given a, a chance to be heard. So they have to be given a chance to be heard and then work with the security agencies. That's the only way they can work, you know, get involved in what is happening. They have a role to play, but they have not been given the chance to, you know, to, to, to get involved. Here's my take. It's been a very dark and gloomy week with reports of gruesome attacks and killings, abductions in Nigeria, a ripple effect of unchecked pockets of violence across the country. Why were these activities unchecked, you would ask? Well, we have a set of leaders who are reactionary than precautious, ones who deal with issues of insecurity in kids' gloves, ones who run after unimportant issues while their houses are on fire the ones who use sledgehammers to kill an act, paying lip service to issues that shake or could possibly break the core of our existence. I really wonder why our leaders like to do this last minute fix instead of preemptive measures and decisive show of power and strength to deal ruthlessly with perpetrators of violence. 
a government that would rather shoot at peaceful protesters, yet toy with the idea of negotiating with bandits. When will the people of Nigeria be at the top of our leaders' priority list, I ask? When will we be their core concern? When will Nigeria's leaders wake up to their responsibilities and not be selfish towards us? So dear leaders, save us. Save the Nigeria that you swore to serve and stop playing the ostrich. I'm Mary Anakum thanking you for watching. It's been Cross Politics.